Extraordinary women up and down the country do extraordinary things for others. Mm -hmm. Today, in the last of our Wonder Women series, we meet Noreen Oliver. Yeah, Noreen's story is far from a fairy tale, though. Having uh, stared death in the face after a 15-year addiction to alcohol, Noreen vowed to help other addicts. Well, here is how she achieved her goal. Fifteen years ago, Noreen Oliver lost her job, her home and nearly her life to alcohol. Throughout her darkest years, she drank a litre of gin a day. But having lost nearly everything, she decided to give something back by helping others who wanted to survive a similar experience. Tell me a little bit about your childhood. Um, I had a very good childhood. Um, I've got three brothers and one sister. We're a very close family. My parents came over from Ireland and we had a very strict upbringing. So how would you react to the strictness? <laughs> the same way as I react today, I think I rebelled. I was always the naughty one. I was always in trouble. I was caught in a pub at 16 with a boy and we, I was not allowed to go out with boys at 16. <laughs> um, I certainly wasn't allowed to be in a pub and I certainly wasn't allowed to have a lager and black or a cigarette in my hand. It was very clear that um, alcohol was the crutch and that alcohol was what I needed for confidence. Um, so it became a regular thing in my life and it was something that at that time I enjoyed. Noreen was drinking socially with friends but often to excess. We were all in our 20s and night times were one big booze up and it was just part of what we did. Um, I think I did it more than most. Noreen hid her addiction so well it took a long time for even close friends like Una to realise what was going on. She was um, full of fun, very outgoing, um, party animal. She started to, to be a lot more tired, um, vague, um, found it harder to, to keep her job going. Little things we start to notice, you know, that, that she wasn't the old Noreen, obviously, the alcohol was starting to take its toll with her. I think by 23, I knew that I had quite a problem with alcohol. By the time I was 29, 30, I'd had several detoxes. I'd been in and out of hospital. I had had a liver consultant screaming at me in A&E, have you ever seen anybody die of liver failure? What a horrific death it is. So what was it doing to you physically? I looked like something that had been dug up, basically. Um, I was five stone in weight. Uh, I severed all the nerve endings in my legs, which is called peripheral neuropathy, and it's literally where the alcohol poisons the nerve endings. Um, cirrhosis of the liver and calcification of the pancreas. There'll be people watching this thinking, well, what, why didn't you just stop? When you have become dependent and that is there to pick you up, to, to help you sleep at night, to give you the confidence, by the time it's actually turned on you and you're dependent upon it, it's too late. So how did your friends and family help you through all this? Um, I had a lot of friends around me that were there. You also have acquaintances, you know, that you just drink with. Well, I didn't see them for dust. Um, but Una, she was one of the people that, when the priest came to read my last rites, that was asked to come and say goodbye. I went into the room and I was totally taken aback. It was not my friend lying in that bed. She was emaciated, she was yellow, she was incoherent and he was so scary and I honestly thought I'd never see her again. And my family were told that there's nothing more they could do and I wasn't going to make it. That was the point that I made a promise and said, you know, please, you know, give me a chance. I will do something with my life um, and I will make a difference. I will help others. Now Noreen's life is very different. She hasn't touched a drink for 14 years and she's been happily married since 2005. And she's the driving force helping others get their lives back on track. And here's how. In 1998, five years after overcoming her addiction, Noreen put her money where her mouth was. Using a small inheritance and a £5,000 loan, she set up the Burton Addiction Centre in two rented rooms. Based in Staffordshire, the centre began with just one qualified therapist and Noreen, who multitasked as an advisor, bookkeeper and cleaner. Ten years later, the centre has 36 staff and has grown to accommodate 24 full-time resident clients. So Noreen, what gave you the idea to do this place? Um, I wanted people to have the opportunities that I had and rehab then was pretty rare. Um, 
and very, very expensive and people couldn't afford it. So I wanted a service that people could access um, and a rehabilitation service that you didn't need to have private funding for. Yeah. And Joe Public could have. Funding for the centre is provided by the local social services and a small amount from the Home Office. Hello everyone, are you alright? Is it alright to just help yourself to a drink? Yeah, sure. <laughs> are you sure you don't mind? No, no. Oh, this looks a bit nice. Lasagna. Yeah, tonight, the clients. This exceptional centre puts its success rate down to its all-round support for clients. Rehousing, job interview training and even cooking lessons are among the things that are on offer. Brian Kime is a chef who has successfully come through the treatment programme and he's now sharing his knowledge with others. At the end of the day we're alcoholics, we're into drugs and obviously we're trying to beat that now and we've still got to get out there and face up to reality and get on with our lives without being dependent on that what we had before. So Simon, do you think it's a good thing to come and start doing that cooking and stuff? Oh definitely, it gets you back into a way of living again really. You know and have you enjoyed, gets you working again. Have you enjoyed being here Simon? Yeah, I've loved it, yeah. Every week's been brilliant. You learn something new every day. What's your best dish? To be honest, I'm terrible at the minute. I'm just learning <laughs> off the guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it just grain cheese then? Just grain cheese. Cheese on toast. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Drug and alcohol misuse affects individuals, families and communities with an estimated financial cost to the UK of at least £40 billion annually. This is mainly due to health care, absence from work and criminal activity, but the personal cost is almost impossible to measure. Lorraine Barlow is one of the 500 clients coming through the door annually looking for Noreen's help. So Lorraine, tell me what your story was. Well, from the age of 13, um... I started drinking. By 14, I was drinking bad. You know, drinking till I was collapsing. And I started using cannabis then as well. And as time went on, time was turned 16, I'd tried nearly enough everything. Really? Yeah, ecstasy, cocaine, um, LSD. So I was always off my face, basically, 24-7. And it wasn't until I reached the age of um, 24, I started using heroin. And since then, everything just hit me. Just couldn't take any more. After hitting rock bottom, Lorraine turned to the BAC for help. And with the support of Noreen and her staff, four months later, she is drug free and looking forward to a brighter future. You just feel accepted. You know, if you're just being yourself, I haven't got eye behind them masks or behind a drink or a drug to try and fit in and be someone I'm not. Because, like I said, I've never known who I am, really, until I come here. Noreen's success rate is double the national average and through her sheer determination and dedication over the last 10 years she has made a difference to 4,000 addicts and their families. I'll never forget it, so they have given me this opportunity of coming in here. She saved my life basically. She is an inspiration, not just to myself and, and her family but to absolutely anybody that meets her. I love what I do, you know, there is no, you cannot get more satisfaction about you know making a difference to somebody's life. You know, I had the opportunity, now hundreds and hundreds of people have the same opportunity if they want to do it. What do you say when people say you're a wonder woman? Um, I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like when you look back and you see how much you've accomplished? Um, quite mind-blowing at times. And as I say, sometimes it's not bad for the drunk from Nottingham, really. <laughs> <laughs> She's incredible. Amazing lady. Well, uh, for more details on Noreen's Addiction Centre, you can visit our website, itv.com forward slash this morning. <laughs>